Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for being with us here tonight. My name is Karen Goodenough. I'm executive director of NASW Minnesota, and I am thrilled to have a bunch of social workers in the room and a couple of friends and colleagues also um, in allied professions, but joining us to talk about potentially running for office or helping other people run for office. Many of you who are NASW members or a been to anything we've ever put on, we're constantly talking to social workers about running. We have really fantastic skills and expertise to bring to that table. And I believe and my colleagues believe that it's really important that we get more of us in all sort of elected positions tables. So we've put on different kinds of trainings down this path over the last several years in this push to try to get people to run. So let me say one thing here, which is, um, folks, you need to run. So if someone hasn't asked you lately, I'm saying, would you please run for office? So all of you people who responded when you registered and said, I'm thinking about maybe contemplating, maybe kind of running, maybe someday, I'm adding to your list of maybe the seven or nine, depends on which stats you read, but it takes people seven times, maybe nine times. Some I've heard 11. Someone told me this weekend it was six, but you have to hear it multiple times before it actually sticks. So I'm one of those people who heard it many, many times and also have spent a lot of years trying to talk everyone else into running. And so I am going to run. So I'm here to tell you all tonight, I am going to run for county commissioner in Cass County, Minnesota fall of 2024, which as Kate and Beth just reminded me like, yeah, you better get your business in order, get going. I know that's why we're doing this, right? It's partially for me, partially for all of you. So you all are prepared as well. I'm also very involved up here in our Cass County DFL. One of my colleagues is here tonight. Thanks for being here. Um, and we're trying to think about how we support people in running. So we're doing that whole like, come on, you should run, you should run. And then they're like, so what do I do? And we're like, eh. I'm sure there's someone out there who can tell you what you're now supposed to do. So we're trying to get better as social workers across the state in knowing what we tell people. What are your next steps? How do you accomplish this big thing that you want to do? So that's what we're here to do tonight. So I want to say just a couple of housekeeping things, and then I'm going to introduce you to our presenters. So one is we are recording tonight's session, but we are only recording it for our internal purposes. So anyone who registered for this evening and didn't make it, we'll send it out to them. Um, so just a heads up, if you are looking for it or if you have to leave early, something like that, we'll make sure the link gets out to all of you. Your CEUs will also be sent after tonight's session. So I will be taking some attendance and make sure I keep track of who's here. And actually, Zoom takes attendance for us as well. And any housekeeping things I need to add to that business? Okay, we are using the chat tonight. Feel free to drop your questions and comments directly into the chat. Um, if you don't unmute yourself and speak, you will not show up in the recording, even if you have your camera on. But if you have your camera on and you unmute yourself and speak, you're going to show up in our little recording. So just a heads up on that so you're aware. All right, with that, I want to go ahead and turn this over to our fantastic presenters for this evening. We have with us Beth and Kate from Vote Run Lead, and I will let them introduce themselves and all of their amazing expertise as well. But basically, this group goes around training people, preparing people with all sorts of resources. I met with Beth a few months back about my run and thinking about how we could use their expertise here at NASW, and she just handed me this just massive pile of resources to work from. So I'm really excited to have them here with us tonight to talk about 90 days of action. How do we get this thing running for office going for ourselves? So Kate and Beth, take it away. Hey, all right, I can start. I'm Kate Lundquist. I live in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Um, formerly, I, well, I was born and raised in Duluth, went to college in Bemidji, and then spent many of my adult years, if not most of them 15 years up in Roseau, which is on the Canadian border. And so now I did a complete 180 and I'm in the Twin Cities and I'm really uh, um, appreciating that um, and enjoying that. Um, let's see here. I have worked for Vote Run Lead since the spring. And before that, I loved working as a campaign manager. Um, and I got to help some fa fantastic and amazing um candidates but the real reason the the way I got into that was just being a, a citizen I mean I was a teacher by trade 
and I started um, helping just because I cared about local issues and I cared about social justice and things like that. And so if I saw people that I thought were doing those things, um, I know how to do this or that. Can I help you? Um, and then that just turned into where I am today, ultimately. So um, I will miss being a campaign manager. However, I get to help women now all across the state. So it's really exciting. And um, my this, our senior director, Beth, I'm the deputy director. Um, Beth is up on the Iron Range and I'll let her introduce herself. Yeah, thanks, Kate. So yeah, as she said, I'm up here on the Iron Range. I'm actually in Aurora. Uh, but my history with Vote Run Lead branches back many, many years, uh, over 15 years ago, when I ran for Eveleth City Council. And I uh, was not successful my first run, but I was successful my second. So I, I just want to put that out there that, you know, we... Um, we're not always successful that first time, but that conversation is so important for you to be in the mix. Um, but I took Vote Run Leads training in 2008. And by using the tools, the the network, the experience that they gave me, I was able to win my uh, election. And I was an Eveleth City Councilor up here uh, on the Iron Range. And since in 2020, 2021, I joined the staff here at Vote Run Lead. I too, uh, was in human services. I had been working in anti-poverty work and I really see helping get people elected with real lived experiences is a way to take that poverty work upstream um, and make policy that really works for our families. So that's why we're so excited to bring this training to you tonight because each of you are enough. Your lived experiences, your knowledge, your um, understanding of how things work in uh, your communities is exactly what we need at the decision-making table. And we're just stoked to see all of you here tonight. Um, and with that, Kate, I'll hand it back to you. I'm kind of excited. Karen, you're going to have your pick of campaign staffers after this. Um, we're we're all here waiting. Um, so yeah, let me just shift our I slide. I hope so. I don't have any yet. So I'm just throwing that in, folks. You're welcome. Join my little campaign team. You, they're going to tell me how to put together tonight. Cheering you on. So just so you guys know what to expect for tonight, um, we're going to be going over some of just more of what we do. We have an amazing three-woman data team. Um, who has crunched all sorts of numbers and statistics, and we're going to just share those with you so you know where we're at. And with that being said, know that Beth and I are, we work with women and gender expansive folks. That's where our data lies. That's where, how our teachings are built. But, you know, we have in, in opportunities like this, we welcome everybody, but just know that like, that's what you'll be hearing about tonight. But we're so pumped when men come to like, to learn this content too, and then also learn about what women are doing and the need for more women in these spaces. Um, we'll go over 90 things that you guys can do to get ready to run for office or become at the very least more civically engaged, uh, more involved in your communities, um, more in touch. Um, we'll have plenty of time for question and answer. We'll stop a couple times. Um, do feel free to use the chat. And then we'll just take some time to talk about action steps, like knowing what you learned tonight, what are some things that you can do tomorrow, next week, or maybe next year, but things that you will do to um, use what you learned. Um, so just about this, we've already done our intro. Um, if you would not if you haven't updated your name it looks like most people i can see your name so that's great um please do use the chat um it's helpful to us if you're on camera with that being said we're not making anybody be on camera but it is super nice for us to see your face um not required <laughs> but um just helpful and what is this be respectful don't yuck someone's yum yeah, so that's something that Beth said. Yeah, no, it's my predecessor's talk, but yeah, it's okay. something we've said at Vote Run Lead for a long time, right? We just want yeah. everyone to have a good time. We want this to be a great learning environment, and uh, let's just be respectful of each other and and not yuck someone's yum. I love that. I can adapt that. I can absorb that, and I won't yuck the yum by yucking the don't yuck the yum. Anyways, okay. <laughs> I think it's great, um, and just 
we really do encourage you guys to participate. Please feel free to be open and ask anything. There's really no dumb questions. This is a fascinating field and it's very broad. So if anything sparks your interest, please just don't hesitate to ask. Um, again, we love that you're on video. Um, it just helps us see who's out there. Uh, be present and engaged. Uh, it's um, a little tough when people are, you can maybe go off screen if you have to deal with a child or like answer a phone call or something. Otherwise it can be distracting. Um, I'm in that boat. I've got a swarm of children in my house around me right now. So let's hope that they stay in front of video games or something. <laughs> we can hope. And oopsies. Uh, we may shape, share personal information or otherwise feel vulnerable, just like what stays in the training or what, what's said in the training can stay in the training. I Even Karen sharing that she wants to run for office, I'm guessing a lot of her community members do not know that yet. Uh, there's probably family. that So I wouldn't want you to like blast that out on Facebook. Way to go, Karen. Woohoo. Um, so just anything that's shared here, I just want you to know like it's... It, it, you can feel safe, and I hope we can all agree to that. All right. With that being said, uh, some of you may be wondering why on earth um, a social work training is like almost campaign minded. Why are why are we encouraging and showing you this way? And perhaps we've been through this. Perhaps you know this is not new, but. Um, what you see for my perception of what social workers do, if you're in social work, that's people. And politicians will tell you they're in this for people if they're, you know, doing the right thing. Um, it is very much people and how people operate and what people need. How can we serve people well and serve people powerfully? And there are things and experiences that you have. There's a child. See, I just told you. Knock, knock. Hi, mom. Um, there are things that you have experienced and feel and ultimately like why you became a social worker that really make you an ideal person to lead in these spaces. You know about things, you have knowledge, just like Beth said, like you're made for this. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. Um, some <clears throat> elected women in Minnesota are social workers uh, there is actually quite a list, and we'll be sharing that link with you. It's on the NASW website. There's a huge list of um, social workers who happen to be also in elected office, and they're at the municipal level, they're at the state level, um, and everything in between. County commissioners, um, they're they're everywhere. So um, lots of across the country, you'll see social workers in these leadership spots in every state. Um, I bet that if we were to look up the policies of any of these women, we you would be able to see social work in some way woven within them. Something about their background, experiences, education, and what they've experienced in your field is being worked into our laws and policies and the way that our legislature and local governments operate. So here's just a few. I picked the ones that are at the legislative level and then Emily Larson in Duluth. All right, any questions about that so far? All right. I did, Great. Kate, so, I put a little oh, note in the chat to let, to is, send me a note if you know of someone who's in elected office specifically in more local office. So we know all of the legislators and con okay. you know members of Congress and that sort of thing. I have to turn that into my national office every year, but our local people, people on school boards, city councils, commissioners, those sorts of things, we don't always know. And so yeah. I run into them randomly and they're like, oh, I'm, you know, whatever. So if you know of someone, please um, just send me a quick email and let me know where that person is. And we, we also support people in running. So we want to make sure that we can reach out to them at that point. That's so cool. Does your organize, do you guys endorse candidates? Yeah. So we have a pack and we, we do have funds and endorse candidates in the last, um, big election cycle in 2022, we endorsed 72 candidates across the state. Um, when I know this, I knew this literally last week and I can't remember good chunk of those were social workers, but I'm not going to quote a number to you. 
like 15 ish or something like that 14 something like that for some shorters so yeah love yeah we know Raphael absolutely on my list thanks Kathleen cool oopsies let me get back to the show here all right so for those of you on camera where do you land with the thought of running for office um how many are a heck no like I never would hey that's all right good okay no heck no's that's good maybe one um never thought about it maybe thinking about it like maybe (laughs) that's awesome great maybe maybe and how about heck yes I've got plans ready to go awesome and anybody already signed up that is fantastic we would love to talk to you more all of you more but I do feel get connected um that's great um I highly recommend if you're hesitant to look around and serve on a campaign team in some capacity, it really gives such a great inside look, but we'll get to all those suggestions too. Um, I'm going to toss it over to Beth for a little bit so she can go over some of our statistics and facts around what's really happening out there and what do we need. And numbers, I'm a numbers person. This gets me really jazzed up. So I will try to speak slowly and just stop me if you have questions, um, you know, organically ask your questions. But why is Vote Run Lead here? What are we trying to do? So we see the problem that, uh, and I am going to speak in the binary here, uh, but women are 51% of the population. Um, I see a typo there. Uh, But we only hold 33% of the state legislative seats across the nation. And you can kind of hear see here on the map that Minnesota is doing better than some other states. Uh, if you also want to take a look and engage us against other states, you can look at uh, stateofmydemocracy.org. And you'll see that, you know, even though we're at 37 percent, that's really great. Um, but women of color are at, you know, just around 18 percent while being, you know, well over that in our population. So we we have some movement there. In addition, uh, it'll take us two generations to reach parity at our current rate. Uh, West Virginia, which you can see flagged on here, will take 365 years. So we can't wait. We really need to um, escalate this. Next slide, Kate. So what is what is the solution? to what we're seeing here. Well, we, Vote Run Lead, we are the largest and most diverse women's campaign and leadership program in the United States. So we're a national nonprofit doing work here in Minnesota. We started actually at a kitchen table in Duluth, uh, Minnesota, geez, probably 12 years ago, um, 12, 15 years ago. And so our mission is to unleash the political power of women as voters, as candidates, as leaders to create and sustain an equitable democracy. So we are really looking at how can we make our democracy more reflective? Particularly right now, we're working in state legislatures to make those um more reflective of our communities, but we help women all up and down, women and gender expansive individuals all up and down uh, the ballot. So school boards, city council, mayor, county commissioners. I helped a a county auditor last year. So um, we're helping everyone and our VRLHQ is open to everyone as well. Next, Kate. Uh, So why state legislatures? I just talked about, hey, this is our special emphasis. Well, it's where the fight is. And certainly, you know, after some of the Supreme Court uh, decisions that have been made around voting, around, um, you know, women's autonomy uh, in pregnancy, that they've pushed that to the states. So more than ever, it is about states making rules and laws. And what we've seen in the past is, as many states make that law the way it is the way it goes federally. Also, uh, during today's kind of partisan times, we're seeing that the federal government isn't making much movement on laws that we need to to help our families. So state legislatures are where the movement is at, where decisions are being made. And certainly here in Minnesota, last uh, session, we had a, a, a legislature that just kept moving uh, laws forward. 
Also, state legislatures are democratic laboratories. So next year, in 2024, we have all state house races. Those happen every two years. It's kind of right-sized, right? So you can try, try your message, and perhaps if you're unsuccessful, you try again. And it also is not a budget that's insurmountable uh, most of the time. It's within, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, maybe even less. I know the, the one up in my region was only $13,000. I know I say only, but, you know, compared to other states, this is right size. Um, it also busts the myth, oops, it also busts the myth that women can't get elected. So if we look at our leaders in the state, such as um, Melissa Hortman in the state house or Carrie Diesick, um, Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, those are women in leadership and we had women leading committees all over the place. So, it's, so it shows that women should and can be there and bust that myth. The other one I love to share is that women govern differently. We just do it differently. We talk, we work across the aisle, we bring more money back to our districts. Um, and in this really hyper-partisan time, we need that. We need to be able to communicate and build uh, our future together. And finally, it's a stepping stone for higher office. So 30% of current uh, Congresswomen started in their state legislature. So... Yep, that's okay. So then the, the what we're saying is the solution is you. It's all of you. You are the expert in your community. You're the one that makes democracy reflective through your own lived experiences. You're the one that makes an, an impactful democracy. You have what it takes to run and win. And we are like so excited to be here tonight to show you how to get started. Absolutely. Oh, here's another slide because I love it so much about women <laughs> governing differently. So statistically, like the research actually shows that we do bring more money home, we pass more bills, and we're more likely to be transparent in how we do that business of government. We want to bring more people in with us. We want to have conversations around those bills or when we're creating policy, we want, we want more uh, for our laws. Okay, so then here's where we get into some stats, right? So only 38% of the Minnesota legislature identify as women or non-binary. And you can see where they fall in the House and the Senate here. The um, purple are women. Next up. But at the current pace, it's going to take over two decades for women to be in the majority. Next. So let's think about, I'm way up here, I say way up here, but I'm in Northeast Minnesota, and I think a lot about rural women's voices and how they're not sufficiently represented in the Minnesota legislature. So, you know, in the House, men, rural men outnumber women three to one, and in the Senate, it's seven to one. So that's, that's a huge uh, gap there. And if you can look at the different regions, in my northern region, in the Senate, it's 15 to one. Um, in the southern region, in the Senate, it's five to one. Again, how I was talking about women of color, they hold now only 10% of the overall state legislative seats, which is only 19 uh, seats overall because we have 201 seats, but only three of those seats are held by indigenous women, uh, four if we count uh, two-spirit individuals. But we're making change, we're making headway, and 2022 showed us that. We elected our first transgender woman, we elected the first woman veteran to the legislature, the first non-binary two-spirit person, that's Leish Klausowski in Duluth, um, the first millennial and youngest ever elected, 23 uh, when she was elected, Senator Zainab Mohammed, and the first three Black women, also Senator Mohammed, uh, Senator Clara Omu Verbaten, and uh, Senator Erin May Quaid. They were the first Black women ever in our Senate, and it was 2022. But we're making headway, we're breaking those barriers down, and you can help us with making that reflective democracy. Yeah, so, I mean, get out your pen and paper and feel free to jot down any of these ideas that um, ring true to you. We're going to just start um, firing away and let us know again if there's any questions. So far, are there any questions that we can help with? Feel free to raise your hand.
I, I'm just going to raise my hand since I yeah, have all sorts too. of questions, but I'm just wondering, so for when we're talking about more local offices and numbers of women in them, do you have any data about other local elected positions? For example, I am understanding that there's only ever been one woman on the Cass County Board of Commissioners wow. ever. Wow. And I don't know if that's true in other rural areas. You know, that kind of data I feel like is really interesting as you're as you're running. I see more women on school boards for sure, some in city councils, those sorts of things. But any data on more local offices? Yes. So we have a national partner who uh, whose name is escaping me. I will find it before the end of our training, who keeps all of that data on local electeds. Um and you can kind of peruse through that and look for what you want. We right now are, our data is very much focused on that state legislature piece, but we can get you a link for that other, uh, other information. And I don't think that it is unheard of, um, Karen, that there would be county commissions that have never had women, city councils that have never had women. We also are tracking some legislative seats that have never had women. Uh, you know, it's hard with the redistricting to say, oh, this place has never had a woman when when the lines, you know, keep uh, changing. Mm-hmm. But, but it is so prevalent. And, you know, again, Minnesota is kind of in the middle of the pack. We're doing really well for ourselves compared to some places like Tennessee, um, our counterparts in Georgia um, and other places. Mm-hmm. I definitely think it is time we start seeing those changes. You know, if you look at St. Paul, they are due to have it is highly projected that they will have an all woman city council after this election in November. Um, you can look it up on Star Tribune. Um, they're all really amazing. Fantastic. I mean, there's a dynamic group of women. And I just can't help but think like this is a ripple effect. Um, you know, times are changing. These seats that have never had a woman are going to start seeing. Um, um, and, see, you know, so yes, but especially in like out uh how outstate minnesota i mean i lived there for mm-hmm. so long and to have a woman in any of those seats was like, like you said really rare and it's just like time to change that really time absolutely to change. and side note folks we are endorsing a woman who is also a social worker in that um st paul city council race Potter vang you shall vote for her if you live out there um, I did share it is the Center for American Women and Politics. And so I've shared a link to their uh, website Great. and uh, where it's at Rutgers where you can find more information. Great. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right. Let me get my cursor where it needs to be. All right. So the first thing is just to really know your why. I don't know if you've ever heard that term before, but it's really like finding the heart of what you do and why if somebody said go run around to a, or go run over to the neighbor's house I'm like sure I can do that but if they told me that they had like a big piece of cake waiting for me I would be much more motivated to get over there and um, get going and see my neighbor eat some cake um, it's the same thing like you know people are like okay I guess I like leading people. That's fine. I like being engaged in my community. Um, But something magical happens when you hit that, like the why, like, I don't know, maybe you've experienced that as a social worker in your field or, you know, why do you get up and do what you do every day? Um, I had no interest in serving on my neighborhood association board um, until for me, they touched an issue that, that made me want to run and get the cake. (laughs) It's like, I, they wanted to come after renters in our neighborhood and really like prohibit, be, become very prohibited of who could be, um, in this neighborhood and things like that. And to me, that was like nails on a chalkboard. I could not sit still. And now I'm vice president of the HOA board (laughs) and renters are welcome. So anyways, they really touched on a why for me. And ultimately I do just want my neighborhood to be a welcoming and inclusive place. And so, that's why I've commit to three years um, on this board. I see a mom's demand action um, sign in the back. Perhaps that is a an issue that has spurred you to like work in this, you know, maybe step forward and like get policies passed, maybe work on a school board, you know, things like that, whatever it may be. But 
um, finding your why. We have a whole curriculum and exercise around finding your why um, if anybody needs help getting there. But Oops, there's a little video that goes along. Can you all hear? Hey, sweetheart, do you have your books for school? Okay, that's, that's good. Do you need help? I learned growing up that not all homes have four walls. I remember the kiddie pool I played in at our old house, the house we lost after my mom finished serving in the army and couldn't pay the bills. That was a home. And there was the gas station where I slept in that same kiddie pool the night we fled domestic abuse and had nowhere else to go. That was a home. Then there was a shelter we stayed at while mom got back on her feet. But moving from place to place, one thing stayed the same. The classrooms where my teachers encouraged me. The lunchroom where I always had a meal. The support system that gave me structure. My school was a home too. And that's why I was able to get a full scholarship to college, become an educator, and eventually, I ran for school board here in Texas because those serving didn't understand the families who depend on their schools like I did. But our kids can't learn if their families can't afford a roof over their heads, food to eat, or the health care they need. Our congressman has been a politician since before I was homeless, sleeping in a kiddie pool outside a gas station. Kenny Marchant is listening to his donors, but back at home, we're not being heard. Look around, the places, the people, our values, this is our home, and it's changing fast. My name is Candace Valenzuela, and I'm running for Congress so that all of our children have a home to live, to learn, and soon, a house where they'll be heard. I love that video so much. I've seen it so many times, and it like gets me every time. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and even, you know, if it doesn't speak to your uh, you know, political part. It wasn't very partisan, but if it doesn't, the, there are some images that stick with you as to why she's running for office. Because, you know, the kiddie pool, the the image of the gentleman who is aging in office and, you know, he's not hearing his constituents. School was meant so much to her and it was such a lifeline and she wants to make sure that that is the way it can be for children ongoing. I just love the message. I, again, I don't know what party she's with, but she like pulled up my heartstrings. I want to vote for her. But if you Google her, Mr. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Beth, do you know it? But yeah. she is. Uh, Car Carla Valenzuela. Valenzuela. Yeah. Anyways, she's been doing some great, great things. Okay, sorry. There we All go. right. Go ahead, Beth. Yeah, so the next thing you would want to do um, is make an inventory of your base. It's really easy to get kind of stuck in, I know only this many people, I know of a small group of people, but if you actually put it on paper, you know, you want to start making your plan, actually put on paper, who do I know? And then put on paper, who do they know? Because you're going to see that your network is going to grow uh, beyond what you think it is. Additionally, you want to know, okay, of this network, who can volunteer for me? Who is, who's going to support me? But maybe that support is going to be door knocking, or maybe that support is going to be writing a letter to the editor. How is that network going to help you? And then make a plan. Okay. Maybe your network is, is for instance, all social workers or all teachers or, you know, leans heavily that way. How can you open it up to make sure you have engineers or attorneys or other people? Where are the gaps? Maybe they're all um, indigenous people or a majority and you want to make sure you have Somali or, you know, other uh, ethnic groups part of your uh, network. And from that, start meeting with people. And that leads into the next one. Hmm. Have 15 coffee dates. So that's something I would tell Karen, like, look around to your community. Who is our, who's an established leader? Who are people who are influential or who has had a good impact? Um, 
it could be anybody, anybody who you want to be on your side, you know, and have 15 coffee dates. This is a huge part of when, of the beginning of a campaign, telling people one-to-one over coffee, here's my plan. Here's what I'm thinking. You know, what questions do you have? And can I count on you for support? Really building that base because those people you meet with are going to really come into play, Um, especially if they are community leaders, they're going to you know, their, their influence, their opinions and their help and guidance will ultimately um, work really well for you. And then you taking the time to have those conversations, you'll both gain from that experience. So it's a lot of one-on-one time, lots of one-on-one time. Then you need to become an expert in some of the issues because you want others to see you as an expert. So we say here, choose two issues that you wanna be an expert on. We used to say three, two that you really love and a third that, eh, you know, maybe is is iffy. When I ran for city council, you know, again, I came from that human service background. So I understood affordable housing in our community. I understood jobs and, and economic development, but I had no clue about streets or sewers. So one of my top issues was to start reading, I know it's crazy, but to start reading um, the city uh, minutes and also uh, any other newsletter that I could around understanding sewers and, and what was coming up with streets and what's so important you know, about, oh my goodness, how many of our communities have lead pipes? Does that affect my community? And I be- started to become an expert on that because I wanted other people to be able to ask me about it. And I also wanted to be able to speak uh, about it to other community members. And and to do this, you can simply read an article a day. That's as simple as it gets. An article a day about that topic eventually makes you an expert because other people are not reading about it. Learn your political landscape. Who are the players and what are they working on? And this, so many of these intertwine. But so find out what's happening, who is behind them, and then, hey, have some coffee dates. Um, uh, Yeah, find those leaders who you can um, create alliances with even to um, and make sure you're on the same page. And with, you know, becoming an expert on different things, there's going to be a lot of leaders who have the expertise in areas that you don't Um, find out, you know, there's so... Getting involved in campaign politics, I had no idea all the things about unions I needed to know, the environment. Um, There's so many different topics that, boy, I never thought of it that way. And the the perspective that these orgs and these local leaders have on these um, on these things is vast and amazing. So just they'll be, I'm sure, very excited to share what they know and who they know with you. Kate and Beth, will you share these slides with us so we can send them out to our attendees? Okay, great. So you don't have to feverishly take all the notes, folks. Just heads up. Yeah, in addition, um, it is on the VRLHQ, VRLHQ VRLHQ.org, 90 days of action. uh, So it's 30 different things. And there's a handout that actually has these 30 things listed. Um, We'll make sure we get you that link too. Our next thing, though, is attend a government meeting. And, you know, we started the slide during COVID. So this can be virtual. Meetings now are virtual as well as in person. That was what was really great about the legislature during COVID. Even those of us who lived really far away could attend uh, conference hearings, and they've kept some of those. Others, you know, they haven't. It doesn't work that way. But attending these meetings makes sure that Not only do they know your face and you can meet who's there and ask them to coffee, like we said earlier, but you then know what they actually work on. And is that the right place for you? Maybe I didn't want to work around sewers and streets, maybe what and budget. Maybe I was thinking about, oh, I want a better education for my kids. Well, by attending a city council meeting, I would see, you know, that actually, you know, beyond zoning and and planning and codes, I really need to be on the school board for this thing that I care about. Or maybe the state legislature is where I need to be. So attending these hearings really helps you understand the political landscape of who who's there at those meetings, who's saying what, and how do they work. There's not a lot more motivating than being at one of these meetings and feeling like, wait a minute, what on earth are they talking about? Like, this is baloney. And 
um, I want to be in this conversation. Like that has helped me um, get involved because I'm like, oh, they're talking about things that I want to have a part in um, or that I had knowledge about that they didn't. So in addition, some elected officials will let you shadow them for a day. So by going to these meetings and meeting them, you could make that ask of, hey, is it possible for me to attend a couple of your hearings or, you know, to attend what you're doing for a day so I can understand the the process? Well, maybe later, okay? You go play. <laughs> Mama's teaching for a little bit, okay? Excuse me. Um, write a letter to the editor. So you are all knowledgeable about many things already. Feel free to lend your voice because people will start to see you as um, an expert in that sense. So um, definitely don't be afraid to have your voice heard. Um, letter to the ed- letters to the editor are great. Um, crazy comments and Facebook posts, probably not. Um, you can avoid those. But yes, newspaper articles um, and um, forums such as that, um, or being coming part of a community panel, things like that. But yeah, write a letter to the editor about something that you feel strongly about. And I do see a comment here in the comment box, you know, have uh, they basically lost their local paper. And that is happening in, you know, a lot of communities, but perhaps there's a blog or another place that you can write to Mm -hmm. um, or start your own blog. Because again, you've become the expert on these issues. Start sharing that information however that may look. If it's not a letter to the editor, maybe it is a social media post of some sort. Yeah. Or, you know, and it's not as, as focused and personal, but, you know, if you expand out, there's likely still like in the next city over um, uh, a newspaper you could contribute to. And a lot of those are published online. And then, so you could um, share with your own channels as well. Um, So this is a big one. Email your local political party. Now, we're not saying that you have to be affiliated with one of the two main parties, but getting to know them and knowing their uh, process is super important and getting them to know you, uh, especially if you want to run for a position that does need a party endorsement. Again, you could run without that endorsement, but it usually comes with some really good resources, people power, financial resources that without that endorsement is, is you're not going to have an equitable time. Um, you don't have to tell them right away that you're running for office. Just tell them you want to know more about what's happening in that political party, what's happening locally and, um, and go from there. Absolutely. Email an elected official. <laughs> I can tell you that if um if if you send something that is not a complaint or even an ask of of a resource uh they'll be delighted i mean hopefully elected officials are happy to hear from constituents no matter what but truly if you reach out with um just sharing who you are and what you hope to become what you want to gain um what work of theirs you've admired um and want and ask to connect ask to visit um I just think that you'll be met with open arms in most cases. So um, keep them informed and also keep your own, keep your experiences and your um, in mind too, because if you have ideas or requests or um, knowledge about an area of which they are leading, they'll want to know that and they'll want to hear from you. So, um, you know, for a long time, I really felt like, elected officials were these people high up, like unobtainable, unreachable, um, fancy people wearing suits. Of course, they're, but they really are our neighbors and they're really so human. And um, I, that is one really something I've learned along the way that I just feel encouraged about is they are just like you and me. <laughs> and and in a sense, it for me, that closed the gap. Like, I never thought I could do that or operate in those spaces. But like, no, I totally can because they are all normal humans who just took that next step, who took that brave step. So um, that's just for anybody who is like me, who is maybe a little intimidated by people in higher in office. Um, they are just totally human. 
So the next one is sign up for five email lists. And I get it, we all have a full email box. But something to think about, and I don't get paid by them, but unenrollme.com allows you to put all of your emails kind of in a in one email and then you can choose which ones you're going to read so i do recommend that but sign up for five email lists and not just things that you like right not just your point of view you want to learn another point of view so that you can broaden your horizons so you can really hone in on your expertise and and be knowledgeable about why it is that that you feel this way on something. So make sure that you choose of those five, at least one that's a different viewpoint. And then uh, start reading those email lists. And, and this is a great way to build your network too, right? So if you're on an email list for, let's, um, what's one that I'm on? Um, uh, Minnesota 350, I believe it is. It's an environmental uh, email group. I'm on that and I've been able to meet their staff, meet their executive director. So that helped broaden and increase my network. And, and that's what these email lists can do too, beyond just getting uh, gaining expertise. Absolutely. Vote Run Lead is a great email list to be on as well. I gotta say, <laughs> donate to a political cause. Boy, if you wanna get on somebody's radar, throw money in there. Um, that'll definitely get you on some lists too, but yes, donate. Um, you know, what goes around comes around too, because maybe someday you'll need that, those donations as well. Um, it just never hurts. Um, you know, if you've got extra, um, donate to those who are either doing the work in the area that you care about or that you want to know more about, or like people who you believe in. Um, so yeah. It can't hurt. It's a good thing. Ask a friend to make a donation. And this is actually my friend, Julie, uh, working for the United Way up here in Northeast uh, Minnesota. So this helps you practice asking for money because when you run for office, believe it or not, you're going to have to ask for money and you're going to have to ask for money a lot. So this helps you practice that, understand how it makes you feel internally when you ask for money so that you can work through those things before you um, start asking for your campaign. And I'd also say like when it feels really good, when someone's like, oh my goodness, I care about that too, write that down. Keep yourself a note of how you felt then because they're going to be tough days on the campaign trail and you want to go back to that to know, yes, there are people out there who care about what I care about. They do want to donate. They do want to help. Um, and you can go back to that. Totally. Join a new organization. These all kind of go hand in hand. But again, like, you know, spend time around people who you want to become more like, in a sense. Um, so yes, there's just so many things out there. Um, quick Google searches, um, asking your elected leaders, uh, asking your community, wh where do we need to be plugged in? Where should we go? So yeah, join a new org, learn more things. Um, that's about, I don't know, all I can say about that. Get involved. And that could be at the state or national level. Those were both um both local, national, all kinds of uh, organizations there. So the next one Kate alluded to earlier is like the best way to get yourself comfortable with running for office is to volunteer on a campaign. And this is our friend uh, Carrie Dory in uh, Ortonville, Minnesota, which to be honest, I had not heard of Ortonville. And uh, now I'm like super excited to go over to Ortonville. It's the little, it's the little knob over there on the west side of, of Minnesota. But maybe through volunteering on a campaign, you find out, you know what, I don't want to be the candidate, but I do want to be a campaign manager or I am good at digital. And this is where it will start mm -hmm. is by being on those campaigns, seeing how that the inner workings uh, happens and moving forward from there. Kate, did you want to share something on volunteering? Hmm, sure. Just, I mean, volunteers are worth their weight in gold to campaigns, uh, really meaningful work. Um, and again, if you are aspiring to be in office, it's such a great way to learn the ropes. Um, it also really, for me, it really, um, I had a lot of, I want to say like misconceptions about what it would mean to run for office. Um, and when you get on a campaign, you really, while there are, 
there's days where you think, oh, never again. Why did I do this? But most of the time, it's just really endearing. You see the people show up for you. You see people eager to donate. You see people bring food or um, the, oh my goodness. And the, the beautiful conversations you have with people at, if you door knock, things like that, there's just so many silver linings. So anyways, with that being said, if you volunteer on a campaign, you get that behind the scenes look uh, of the craziness of it, but also the beauty of it. And it becomes much more like, oh, I can do that. Like, okay, now I'm equipped. Um, so it's like free training and you're um, helping them in return. I'm. Let me just add to that, yes. that I helped on two campaigns last year. And I learned real quick that none, none of them knew what they were doing either. I was yes. like, okay, we all, they're, they're starting from, what are we doing here? Really? How do we start this thing? So yeah, I think yeah. this conception and like this idea that everyone knows exactly how they're going to go about this thing. Don't yeah. believe it. People don't. Everyone's generally starting from scratch. Like how I said, they're just human. They are us. And so that's right. Yeah, getting that good team and knowing where to go to learn uh, is a great spot too. But um, yeah, there's so many experts out there and people who would be so good at this work. But they let that like that the fear of what a com campaign is or the lack of knowledge of what goes into a campaign keep them from pursuing it. So yes, volunteering you just it's like you learn real quick. There's there's almost it's hard to learn what to do unless you just hop in. So it's it's a great way. Oh, I'm oh I, that was yours, Beth. Okay, so I'm on fifteen. Talk to your family and friends. Uh, let them know and you'll probably be met with enthusiasm um, or, or some hard truths that you can work up, but um, keep your family in the loop. Let them know first, um, see how they can support. If you look at uh, campaign financial records, you'll often see like the families really circle around um, the candidates as some of the first donors and some of the higher donors. Um, so yeah, and then when you talk to them, uh, definitely, you know, make sure that you've got their support and then write their name down on your volunteer list because <laughs> you're going to need them. Yeah. And I would say, can we go back to 15 real quick? I, was, I want to add that, you know, when you go to other organizations, they're going, they want to know that you're a viable candidate. And through that is some of this fundraising. And so having your family and friends give to you and give, you know, some of them give very generously to you. Um, is going to be very helpful. But the other piece about talking to your family, you know, as Kate alluded to some tough truths, you want to make sure that you know you have the support network there. If you are a single parent or if you are married, that your partner knows that, hey, this is going to be tough. This is how long it's going to take me. This is what I'm expecting of this campaign. You know, what questions, what concerns do you have? For me, I always share as an elected official, I had to have a different conversation because how I governed and how my husband, um, I am married, governs is different. And so he would be out and about with folks saying things and they would assume that that is how I'm governing. And so, you know, we had to have a conversation about disclaimers and and how, you know, he doesn't speak for me and and how I vote is not uh, his vote. And, and so those conversations should be had early on as well so that you're going into this with open eyes. And then the next one, again, about this expertise, take a course or join a book club about an issue that you care about. So these are a couple um, book clubs that I know about, 100 Rural Women, um, One Book Northland. I think the Hennepin County uh, Library also has a book club. But you you really want to gain that expertise. And I know that it's tough, you know, with time, but I have a lot of uh, windshield time, as I call it. So I do audio books, however that looks so that you can take time for your, yourself, but also learn some additional stuff. And it also is a great way to build your network if you're there with other people. Get political online. I made um, a joke about not going crazy in Facebook comments, and I still stand by that. But getting political online, what that has meant for me is following organizations and leaders that I admire and respect and want to learn from. Um, so often they, you know, they put, you know, our legislators will put forth information to keep me updated 
and you know the other viewers on updated on the issues um just off the top of my head the driver's licenses for all a lot of the leaders that i follow were were really enthusiastic about that and it was super fun to follow along and i felt invested in that because of what i was seeing on my own social media feeds um yeah following different organizations that put out facts and data or um yeah, just information to consume. That helps me when I'm technically in free time and just scrolling and um, just consuming content that keeps me even um, better informed. So um, there's also lots of local groups um, that uh, are formed, you know, whether it's a political party or um, a local interest group, there's a lot online, a lot, a lot, a lot. Are there any um, suggestions or ideas around ways that you have felt connected online with issues or people? Ways you've been political? It All looks right. like Kathleen was on Twitter when it was called Twitter, which was a different beast back then, that's for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's Substack? Yeah. Have you heard of Substack, Kate? Gina I've shared that. Heard one. of that? Is that like a um, where you can read blogs? So who wants to explain Substack? Who's let me? It's a, a lot Gina. of the people that I was following on Twitter. I'm not on there anymore. Okay. Um, have moved over into Substack, and there are a lot of writers, legal, political um, writers, who are writing daily or um, whatever. Asha Rangappa is doing a class called the Freedom Academy that's all about mm -hmm. disinformation campaigns. Um, mm -hmm. So if you join and pay, you get a different product, but you can mm -hmm. browse it on online for free and get a lot of really good political um, information through there. Excellent. Um... That's wonderful. I know a lot of our uh, leaders or a lot of the senators and legislators, they have um, also newsletters that go out and um, you can certainly subscribe to those too. And they outline all the issues that they're working on as well. A lot of options. Hold on one second. All right. Yeah. Email a reporter. I think, you know, Kate alluded this to this earlier, but they don't get a lot of, uh, well, elected officials um, and reporters on top of that don't get a lot of thank yous. So when you email them a thank you or you reference an article of theirs that they've read, they really appreciate that and they can build a relationship with you. So so that helps, you know, in multiple ways. They need thank yous for what they're doing, but they're going to come to you for leads on stories or when you start running for office, they're going to be like, oh, I know Beth. I remember Beth. You know, we have this relationship. I want to attend her kickoff or I want to attend this fundraiser. I want to cover it. And so it's building that relationship for when you need that coverage later. Put together your contact list. Oh, this is, again, similar to what was mentioned earlier, but the lists are so important. Um, right now, there's candidates coming forward to run for the state legislature, the House, uh, next year. And this is one of the first things I say is, like, start making lists. Like, these lists are so important that you write down. And people you meet on the street, like, hey, I'm cheering for you. Write it down. Like, write who your friends are, your relatives, your um as uh, uh people you work with co-workers um acquaintances um have kids who are their parents names like write them down um people you run into um keep track of those things because it they really matter as far as an organizing standpoint um yeah keep it organized Research voter registration numbers in your district so earlier on slide um nine I think it was or we talked about getting to know your local party official. They're going to be able to give you all kinds of voter registration information, voter demographic information that may not be able to be found elsewhere. Um, you can go to your county election office, your city election office, the Minnesota Secretary of State website, 
has voter data. Um, if you just want demographics, there's uh, Minnesota Compass. We have a whole thing on the HQ about you know how to research your voting district. And you definitely want to understand who are you going to need to connect with to get to that win, right? And we talk a lot about a win number. What number of people do you need to vote for you to actually win? And that too is on the HQ. There's some math behind that of, you know, what are the last three elections? What are some averages? What, you know, versus uh, who's registered to vote, who actually votes? Um and so that win number you want to work up to as you're running on your campaign. So understanding who's in your district is the beginning of that. Yeah, that's why I like those lists because you can see how close to your numbers you're getting. Um, all right, read your local newspaper every day. Um, basically stay in touch with what's going on. Um, so if you do not have a local newspaper anymore, Again, go one town over. Maybe they cover yours. Um, well, the, and there may be some influential people in your community that write or that are on social yeah. media. What are they talking about? This is really about what, as Kate said, what's happening in your community. How do yeah. you get connected to that? Totally. Uh, how many of you are in the Twin Cities? I am. Okay. So maybe half of us. Um, great. I know for me in Brooklyn Park, we don't technically have a newspaper. I think there's there's a news, uh, we have CCX. It's a news station that covers like the Northwest Metro. Um, we've got the Sun Post that kind of covers our region, but nothing just for Brooklyn Park. And honestly, it drives me crazy because I, I don't feel that, you know, newspapers really, I think, did a great job of capturing a community. Um, the Star Tribune is one thing, but boy, that covers a huge area for millions of people. So for me, as crazy as they can be, I do spend time intentionally on our community Facebook pages. Um, there's also the neighborhood app. Um, so the community Facebook page, you often hear what people are saying, like, um, I really loved this store or does anybody have a place to that changes oil that they really like or whatever, but you kind of do get the pulse of a community through some of those pages. So, um, it's, you know, or you hear what news things are going on or noteworthy things. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's what I recommend. Yeah. And I just put a couple of names of some press in here that are, related to specific populations like the women's press it's yes. what's happening for women and girls across the state the sahan journal is all about immigrant populations and i know there are more of those are just the two off the top of my head but you know maybe you want to read your tribal newspaper there are a lot of places where you can find news you know um other than just your local paper yeah all right so this is one that is uh close to me because I still struggle with this and we're not all, um, you know, going to be perfect at these things right away. But the very first thing you need to try to, to do is stop apologizing for your needs. And, and we have a cute little uh, commercial here for you. Again, we're not endorsing this uh, product, but we wanted to show you this concept. The prototype that we built. Sorry, can I ask a stupid question? Sorry, do you have a minute? <sighs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hey, there he is. My voice squeezing here. Sorry. 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 Did so I was Tim. Sorry, go first. No, it's just. I was just gonna say. It's Back to the original thing that we did. Morning. You got a minute? Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. So this commercial um, is cute and funny, but it's really about taking back your own power, taking back your own opinions, um, and not being, not diminishing them by saying sorry. Really stand uh, in your power. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need. 
and what you want. Um, we are worthy. Oh, let me get by this. All right. Practice telling your story. This is huge. And this is something that we work with people on in other trainings and one-on-one, -on -one, but your story, who are you and where are you from? Like, and what makes you, you, um, it sounds weird to say, practice it, but it really works. So practice with your family, practice in front of the mirror, record you. Oh my gosh. Like what we would have given 30 years ago to be, ha be able to have the ability to like video and watch right back right away and not have to put like a VC or a tape in the VCR and whatever. Um, we have these tools, um, even the voice memo app, practicing uh, speaking and listening it back without the video. Um, just practice. Uh, don't, you know, write it down, outline it, what parts are important, time yourself. It's another thing. Um, with candidates, they need to be able to practice having their story and their why right away. Um, like they call it an elevator speech because if you meet somebody in the elevator, you've got this like short window of opportunity to, to bring them in. And the same thing when you're at the door or meeting um, somebody, you know, wherever for the first time, just like you have to capture. Um, I'm trying to think if anybody off the top of my head um, had just like a really good hook, but your story, there's a candidate running in Duluth right now. And the first sentence on her website is like, I'm a convicted felon or something like that. I mean, it was just like, Oh, okay. You have my attention. I want to know more. Um, so uh, her name is Miranda Pacheco. You, you'll, you can look her up. She's, uh, I think an endorsed DFL and endorsed candidate in Duluth. So really neat woman. Um, so yeah, yeah. Practice, practice, practice. And it'll pretty soon you won't have to think about it. It'll just roll off. Oh, wait, I have one more Claire Uma Verbaten, uh, state, one of the first black female state center, like her, one of her first lines was I'm Claire Uma Verbaten. I'm the daughter of a Dutch um, a Dutch immigrant and, um, my, uh, it's like Liberian mother or something like she would just very clearly, like very proudly in the first sentence say like, I am, um, the, the daughter of a Dutch man and, uh, the daughter of, a um, uh, Afri what country in Africa? I'm just losing it for now, but anyways, and it just like, she was so proud and like said that as part of her story. And again, it like catches your attention and uh, makes you want to listen for more. All right. So this one is really fun. I think make a list of your political sheroes or heroes, like truly know who, who do you love? What do you love about their leadership? And then follow them on social, follow their newsletters. Like Kate said, uh, Congress, people, uh, state legislators, they all have newsletters. I, I'm not quite sure um, county level and below if they do, but follow them so that you can understand how they speak about issues, uh, where their passion lies. Is that where your passion lies? Maybe maybe you follow someone who doesn't completely agree with you so that you can learn that other point of view. Um, but you also want to watch how they do speeches and how they do their elevator speech so that you can um, really learn what qualities you want to have as a candidate and as an elected official. Do an activity that is not political. Not much explanation needed, but don't forget to take time to do what you love. And, um, and also, you know, whatever you're enjoying doing, you're going to meet people and um, expand your community and your network. So, um, yeah, and I would just add, you know, there's going to be so much time that you can do political stuff. Yeah. Self-care is going to be really important and taking a step back and taking some breaths, getting outdoors if you want to get outdoors, reading a good book, you know, having dinner with your kids, whatever that looks like that's not political. Absolutely. Yeah, those boundaries around that, especially so with this 90 days of action, like if you're in the season of really getting ramped up and ready to dive in campaigns are busy and so um making you know making it a priority that friday nights you go see a movie or go to dinner or um you know sundays are church or wednesday nights i'm doing basketball with my kids or something like really carving out that and like keeping that time that gives you energy 
and fills you up is going to keep you from getting burnt out from the other other things such as running for office. So I just read an article, I think it was in the New York Times the other day that most Americans, most people who live in the U.S. do not know who their state legislator is. They know who the president is. We always see that in the news. We we know about that, but they don't know who is setting policy for their district. And so it's really important that you find out who your legislator is. Who is your county commissioner? Who is your city councilor, if you don't know that already? And how long have they been there? Are they a long-term incumbent? Are they brand new? What is, you know, their platform? Are they, have they already told people they're retiring? Is that a place for you to be? But it's super important that we know who our elected officials are because they are making the policy that guides our lives. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And you want to guide our lives next, so. Yeah. I'm just finding out more and more as I follow legislators online on Instagram, namely, um, just seeing like, hey, I visited the community center down the street and I was able to secure three million in funding for them for next year. Something is like, oh, gosh, like every day I learn more and more about what it really means to serve your community and make those decisions about where money goes. That's really so much of what they do at municipal levels and and at the state level like allocating money where do our tax dollars go and who does it help um attend an event outside your sector this makes me really think of um the community of the legislators you know it's leaders from across the state um, and i'm talking about at the state level specifically right now but um and the way that they support each other it's really great um if you want, so after last fall, I got to go around to different areas around Minnesota. This was not with Vote Run Lead, just in my own accord. Um, but I got to go around to different areas that really needed help and just do a, set, a, a shift of door knocking. And it was so fun to get to connect with those legislators, those community members, see what issues are important in that area. Um, anyways, it's just really, I felt like, just showing up for others, it just really helped me feel like a part of that community of people that care. Um, so anyways, going to events, usually when you're running for office, you do a lot of stuff in your district, but it's not completely um, out of question to visit others and um, support them. And because again, what goes around comes around. This community that gets built is really cool. And you'll see um, different people come, uh, different legislators at other legislators events frequently. Um, yeah, at a municipal level, I, you know, just being in fellowship in community with um, other cities and their leaders, that's powerful too. And there's conferences throughout the state that support that um, and provide networking opportunities. So, yeah. Find a buddy. So, you know, we talk a lot about having someone who can really talk you up, right? Who's going to be there for you? Who's going to have your back? And there are going to be times when you're going to do something super exciting and you just want to talk to someone about it and you want them to be excited with you. And so you need a buddy for that. There are also going to be times where eh, maybe something icky happens and you need somebody to listen to you just vent and not tell the press about it and just let you go. And then they're going to say to you, all right. You've done that. Now you're going to move on and you're going to put your shoes back on and you're going to go back out there. And you need that too. So I would say find two to three buddies so that you can have that kind of, it, this is beyond your campaign team. This is, you know, outside of that circle. You need someone who's going to be real with you and be like, what you just said was was not the right thing or know how you're thinking about that policy. Think about it this way. What, what about that? Um, just to give you different points of view, but also to be your hype woman, right? Your hype person and, and hype you up before you um, get out there and, and do the thing that you need to do on the campaign trail. So finding a buddy. I did put in the chat um, that you can find like-minded women at our Facebook alum group. Um, that group has about uh, a thousand people on it. Um, and we will be starting a new group on Slack, another Slack channel. But, you know, Kay referenced this earlier. When you're running for the state ledge, they put you on a, on a 
group chat, uh, and maybe you'll find other candidates for county commissioner or city council that you can chat with too that are going to understand your experience. It's really endearing to see like the different friendships and um, that just that come out of these experiences. And yeah, when you're running for office, it's it's great to find those people who you can trust and um, be there for as well. Um, I know, namely like the uh, women of color who were running last year, they, you know, they really support each other through, you know, you find these groups and networks. It's so fun. It's really neat. It's like summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> stay connected to vote run lead i can't say this enough um beth and i we do these types of trainings but we also do a lot of um, one-on-one -on -one visiting um, with people who are interested in this field we help with um, statewide trainings for campaign managers candidates um, and really you know we have resources but we also really like being able to point you in the right direction as well to other resources that are valuable. Uh, recently at one of our trainings, we gave out lists of um, all the dates that candidates need to know for the upcoming election, all the places that they can seek endorsements from if that's something that they wanted to do. You know, we really try to be a great resource and um, your biggest cheerleader. So um, yeah, stay connected with Boat Runley. We've got a lot to offer. Lot of opportunities and I only wish I would have known more about it when I was uh, in the campaign manager role and learning faster than I could keep or you know it's just like lots of information lots of nodding my head okay I know exactly what you're talking about and then going home and googling like <laughs> you kind of learn that way and it was exhilarating and exhausting the next one is our favorite run as you are that's the the Last and, and first thing you need to do is just be authentic to who you are. And I love that Karen asked you to run earlier. Um, the, the science does say seven to nine times. So here I am asking you again, we need all of you in office to build an equitable democracy here in Minnesota at all levels of government. And you are enough. You are exactly who we need in office. So please run as you are. So what kind of questions do you have after that sea of information kind of tossing at you? So you call this 90 days of action, but I hear no timeline, that sort of thing. Like, should people start now? Is this 90 days from today? Is it just 90 days whenever you decide to get started? Do you think this list takes 90 days? Talk to us about that. Yeah. Timeline so here. So it is made for you to do these 30 actions uh, within the first 90 days of deciding that you're going to run. However, the uh -huh. information is such that you could be going to run in five years, and these are still uh, milestones that you should use to prepare to get yourself ready to run for office. So, you know, we say 90 days, but you can elongate this, you can shorten it however you need. Um, you know, it is October, October, November, December. A lot of people start talking about running for state house uh, right now, because if you're running for state house and, and maybe other offices as well, you can gather funding now, you can fundraise now, and reach one um, fundraising uh, goal. And then in the next year, ask people again, right? So I can donate to a political campaign this year and I have a limit this year. Campaign finance law says I can only donate X amount. Next year, I can donate again. My, my ticker starts over. And so, you know, a lot of people are declaring now but maybe you want to do some research now and start with this 90 days of action. So that 90 days is a, honestly, is a suggestion. We are not saying that it must start now. Kate, unless you have a different opinion. Yeah. I mean, it could be like 30 action steps or, you know, things like that. It's, it's really just kind of giving a wiggle room for various things. And there's things you may like take it or leave it feeling, but really it is just a guide to, um, these are the suggestions. If you are interested in running for office, here's some things. Get plugged in, you know, make connections, mm -hmm. um, start making lists, um, you know, visit with people, things like that. So these are the things like if you're right at the beginning, 
Um, where I get really excited is what comes next, like making that plan, like, what are you going to do? Um, and then going on to the next steps. So any other questions or got comments? someone's hand up here, Kathleen, do you want to ask your question? Hi, sure. Thank you. Um, one is more of a suggestion and then kind of a, a vulnerable sharing and, and yeah. hoping for suggestions or affirmation, I guess. Um, so the, the suggestion was, I don't know how all cities work, but I'm in St. Paul um, and we have uh, a district council system where our neighborhoods are kind of, and our, our wards are further broken down into similar to like um, also neighborhood councils in Minneapolis and they're referred to different things, but that's a really great way. I'm on our district council and that's a great way to start learning about um, hyper-local government <laughs> um, uh -huh. and kind of get your feet wet a little bit um, in terms of learning more. You know, I'm I'm really good as a social worker on the community engagement side, you know, but I know less about uh, urban development and transportation and roads and, and all the infrastructure. So that's a nice way, um, a low pressure way to kind of get a little bit more involved and see if if you enjoy this this work. Um, what and, ward are you in? Um, I'm in Ward 3 in St. Paul and I'm on the Highland District Council. Yeah. I'm secretary. Awesome. <laughs> and that's also Love been a learning it. curve. <laughs> so, um, and then I think my my sharing was um, so I do some, I do my work on the district council and I organize with Moms Demand Action. And so I, I have a lot of contact with our elected leaders and have been contemplating running for some time. Um, and actually was kind of advising on a campaign for city council. Well, a current campaign for city council. I'm actually missing um, one of our cabinet meetings, and it's been um, really eye-opening and and kind of um, disillusioning. I think to sort of see even within the the party, the infighting and and the rumors and the misrepresentations um, that are are being spread um, with with similar like with like minded folks like I'm really used to especially as an organizer for Moms Demand Action like people say all sorts of horrible stuff about me from the other side and I'm able to let that roll off my back but from uh, from your 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 allies you know your your the people who have a similar values that was that was really that's been really hard to sort of witness um, because we should we're all kind of, we should be pulling together a little bit. Like I get that it's a campaign and you kind of, you need to find differences, right? But it's just been, it's made me not want to run. Like, because I just, I, I again, I can kind of, I, I have thick enough skin, enough of a backbone to handle the hate from the other side. But when it's coming from people who you otherwise work with and, and agree with, um, that's been really mm -hmm. unfortunate. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, competitive campaigns and then within the same party can it can feel really icky. So that's I you know, I've lived that and had those stomach aches and like mm -hmm. it's hard. Um I do think that so I'm working with a candidate now who's really coming out to announce now and loudly and strongly and having all these coffee conversations and I think doing that in some candidates will do that to kind of just be like hey everybody I'm really serious about this mm -hmm. and kind of it helps when you have all those meetings with people and kind of get on the same page and um it can help alleviate some but yeah there's always and I always think is it just my town having this drama this is so embarrassing or this is so frustrating but it's everywhere <laughs> Um, and yeah, hopefully everybody ends up on the same page at the end or it can be professional, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't kind of suck in the process to be frank. Um, yeah. so yeah, I get you. And if not you, then, then who you have to think about that too, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, if you can't weather the storm, who is weathering the storm and are they, are they speaking for you? Um, so, but it is everywhere right now. Um, and we we hear that a lot from candidates and, and we're trying to push through that and and you know we need your voice there but I think there's some other questions too yeah let's hear them I'm just putting well, I see Jenny Arneson's hands up and Jenny has been in the elected office for several terms and has run several times Jenny 
What do you think about all this? Well, I just wanted to add just to that conversation, like that we were just talking about. And that's a yeah. very, I just, I just wanted to acknowledge that's a very, a very real thing. And, you know, I first ran 12 years ago, 13 years ago, and it, um, it has gotten worse. I would say like, it has gotten more present that said, I just, I do want to acknowledge in my experience, sometimes local campaigns can actually be worse than state campaigns from that because it is it feels more personal because like there it's very hyper particularly competitive campaigns in a very local like a city council race if that's what you're kind of working on right now those can get deeply personal and I I think that a couple of different strategies I think to think about to consider that because I think yeah we if nobody addresses that if nobody runs through those issues we are like we see a lower caliber of candidates we have fewer options so if people do really genuinely despite the rhetoric despite kind of the the way we're engaging with one another um they people voters do value well-qualified people like period they want to vote for a high quality candidate and they're disappointed when they go into the ballot and they see um folks who are just clearly not quite qualified. And it's because people want to stay away from that. That said, I think some strategies, that buddy system is really important. I think that's where you definitely need a good friend other can and really other candidates or other elected officials. Because I mean, we can all commiserate together about like the very unreasonable emails that we get in all caps and explanation points. And, you know, like we, like that you just need a friend who's kind of been there to talk about that. Um, the second piece is, I think it's really important to surround yourself with a strong campaign team, not necessarily paid, but good friends. Like I, when I ran my first race, it was pretty competitive and I had good friends who worked on my um, cabinet and their job it they did some of the hard things right they they engaged in more some of those more they protected the candidate a good campaign team protects the candidate from the more uh, conversations that they know will be antagonistic that doesn't necessarily mean door knocking but that might mean going to like some of the party meetings where it's going to get a little rough and so that your candidate so the candidate can remain a little bit more chipper <laughs> and you know uh better to engage and the third strong recommendation I have is um, you really should stay off social media in those situations. That doesn't mean you can't, your campaign can't, doesn't have to have a social media presence, but there, that is something you can assign to a volunteer because social media now is unpleasant and that's where, you, and it can really drag you down period. And so if you cannot be on that, that's going to help you remain more positive. And then my last suggestion is actually not for the candidate, but for all of us, uh, anyone who's running a campaign or getting involved, like we need to remind our neighbors. And as we're talking to others, like you can run positive campaigns and you can encourage positive interaction with others. Like I think sometimes people confuse civil disobedience with civility and that they're not the same thing. Like you can disagree with people, you can have an engaged discussion about policy and you can do it without attacking them personally and without like attempting to destroy their life. They're all, even if you disagree with them. So those yeah. are my comments on, the, on that whole thought. Those are excellent, um, excellent suggestions. And to that last piece, you know, one of our alum is Senator Erin Murphy. And, you know, when she ran for governor and when she ran for Senate, you know, that politics of joy, like there really is joy in helping your neighbor. And and we don't have to be divisive. We don't have to be um, hurtful to others. We can be joyful in our run for office. So I really appreciate you talking about, you know, really running a positive campaign. Yeah. I do find that time can heal too. And, you know, after a really divisive um, election last year, you know, the same in the same party uh, in my local area, now that like the season is kind of starting up again, we, you know, we're all ending up in the same spaces because ultimately, like you said, we're, we're on the same team with the same goals. And, and there's, for those of us who, you know, our adults and like professional or whatever, like there, there's a lot of joy in just kind of reconnecting and, you know, kind of reassessing where we can go as a community together. Um, now that it's a different race or whatnot, but yeah, it's, it is a wild ride. I just add, I mean, that is also kind of the, the danger, um, of being kind of a one party town and we're seeing people more segregate by 
political affiliation. So whether you're in kind of a deep red area or a deep blue area, I think that is like you you are trying to highlight differences. And given that there are really not the <laughs> the policy differences are rather subtle, people go for the personal because they're trying to distinguish themselves. So I think that's kind of just the nature of one party. In just another concrete example, uh, one thing that my campaign did is we actually wrote thank you notes to um, all the people who are not voting for me. <laughs> one case I would say a volunteer did that because they thought it'd be too depressing for me as the candidate but it was a caucus situation and you know I will say that it, uh, it that's one way to be positive right like and it was really surprising and one way to just kind of even if the other side is being really negative it just kind of turns things on people's head when you engage with them unexpectedly excellent Kristen did you have a question too um I did sorry to it Oh my gosh, I just said, sorry. Yeah, oh, no I sorry. didn't learn. <laughs> um, what's next? So you do the all, all the preparation. Where are the resources? What do we do next? Yeah, awesome. So that actually leads right into some of our next slides. We have an awesome repository of our stuff. And Kate, I'll let you take it, I'll take it from here. Oh, sure. Yeah, so we do have a lot of resources. Again, I wish I would have had this. This was just debuted this spring. It's already won some awards, I think. Um, basically a huge resource library of um, content that has to do, it's it's worksheets and resources for running a campaign, um, finding your win number, um, creating your campaign budget, lots of, lots of topics itemized out for you. Um, yeah. And then you're on our mailing list. Once you enroll in that, it's free. This is a free resource. You do just create a, a login so that we have your information and your data. But then, yeah, then that gets you on our email list. And we have con kind of continuous training. Um, so VRL, Vote Run Lead Headquarters, VRL HQ. Uh, it's a resource we use quite a bit. So a lot of the resources on there have trainings that go with it but you don't necessarily have to have the training. It just kind of gives it some oomph. But, and we'll be adding to that library of resources as well. Go ahead. Pete. I'd like to talk about how the HQ, this is where, you know, maybe you can't come on a Tuesday night. Maybe it's a Sunday in your pajamas with a glass of wine where you're like, what are the dates I need to be aware of? And that's out there on the HQ for you. There's a whole section just for Minnesota. You know, again, we're a national organization. So there's going to be other states on there. There's going to be Georgia. There's going to be some national stuff, things that, that work in no matter what state, but Minnesota has our own section because we are, you know, unique state. Um, this December, uh, we're going to have a training around caucuses because that's a, a Minnesota-based thing, caucuses and conventions and how to get delegates uh, so that you can get that party endorsement. Um, so those kind of specific things are under that Minnesota repository. But otherwise, go out on the HQ, um, get your registration. Like Kate said, it's free. We do that so we know what people are most interested in so we can set trainings around it. Um, and then, you know, keep an eye out to, again, being on our mailing list, um, we'll have your information out. But I, I mean, I would, Beth or I would love to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and just kind of hear your ideas. And then, so there's kind of like, after this, we would really work with you on, um, you know, what is your motivation? Like, why do you want to run for office? And then kind of working with you on what's next um, and just, you know, helping you stay in the right direction and kind of coaching you through that. We also do have um, professional coaches that come in uh, that should be starting up maybe early next year to work with candidates. And they're like very, very experienced and very knowledgeable. And um, those are all things that we provide to women in our community. So um, I would say keep in touch and then we'll help you. Uh, you know, we can guide along the way with our curriculum and all those things. Yeah, and maybe go to yeah, the next slide. Um, after this, we'll tell you about some other events that we have going on. But um, I, yeah. I think, yeah. So feedback is super important to us. Um, and if you could, I'm just going to like, I took this survey earlier today and it took around two minutes to three tops. So I do just really want to, I wish I had like a song to play or something. But if you, if we could just pause 
And if you guys could fill this out, um, you can scan it or go to tinyurl.com slash VRL dash survey. It's up on And the I screen. put it in the chat if you want to copy it. Great. Okay. So it's in the chat. I'm just going to set a little timer for three minutes and we'll touch back. We have a few other things, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> but if you could fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. Yeah, this is when we need music, Kate. <laughs> I'll get some set. Just give me a minute here. Can you hear the music? No. <laughs> we'll do one more minute. I'll try to judge too, but like I can tell people are working, so I don't want to disrupt. Some of you, as you're going through these questions, might be wondering, like, why are they asking me all these things? This is really nosy. But if I'm remembering correctly, Kate and Beth, you have some grant funds and things that we can all appreciate and understand that requires you to know some of these things about the people who go through your events. Can you say something about that? And you can do it when we get back to it. I just thought as I was answering them, it made me remember. Yeah, and maybe I can start because I know we have, you know, just uh, another minute here. Um, yeah, so we like to know uh, where you came into the training, where you left the training. So it helps us improve what Kate and I do. It helps us alter our curriculum to meet your needs. You know, 90 days of action, uh, and, and we want to hear everything you have to say. So 90 days of action used to be called 90 days of 90 day challenge. And we had some candidates and we had some uh, students, you know, participants who said, look, we're challenged enough as it is. Uh, in particular, Black women are challenged enough as it is. We we don't want like another challenge. It seems daunting to us. So we changed 90 days of action um, because words matter and how we uh, provide our training matters. And we want to hear from you to make sure that we are aligning with your needs and, and our grantors, as you said, Karen, they want to see this um, this improvement. They want to know that we're making this incremental change in our communities. We're trying systems change at the broad level here. And um, these surveys help us understand if we're making that change. It looks like Kathleen has a question. I did. Um, it's it's telling me about that my cell phone needs to match a pattern, but it's not telling me what that pattern well, needs to be. I meant to remind, if you could put a dash between like two and eight dash or you know seven six three dash 
I okay. thought I meant to mention that because I ran into that today. Thank you for asking that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And all that demographic information, again, it's just for statistics. We'll never use that. That will never go beyond us. Um, private data that we respect. All right. It looks like everybody was able to do it. Our um, data team is going to be really happy with this. So thank you. It's like, I really just want to give the time to fill that out. Um, so again, next steps. This is a good one here. Um, this is our C4 leg of our organization. So it'll be a little more partisan, not partisan. Um, Beth, what would be a good, we're a little more. Yeah, it's more values based. Values yeah. aligned. So I think I, I'm safe to use the word a little more progressive. So if that is something that fits in your um, wheelhouse, this is a great opportunity. So it's, don't worry about reading. Basically we're doing um, a national conference in Detroit, Michigan, November 17th, 18th, and 19th. It's really one of the, like the first time that Vote Run Lead has really gathered people interested in running for, for office and people interested in working on campaign teams, such as campaign managers, all in one spot for three full days of learning and networking. Um, and it's going to be really neat. Uh, so, and we tell people all the time with this opportunity, Vote Run Lead wants people there. Um, there are funds available. Uh, when you register, you can click a box. I would like travel assistance. And there's generous opportunity to help you get there. So whether it's as little as I'm interested in serving on a campaign team to I'm ready to run for governor, <laughs> anywhere in between, we would have would love to have you in Detroit, Michigan for this time. So that's an opportunity. There's a QR code. Um, we have I put the um, link in the chat. Perfect. Link in the chat. And you can go to our website, um, voterunlead.org, um, specifically voterunleadaction.org, and it'll bring you right to this Detroit opportunity. All and right. you know, like, like Kate said, this is a multi-day, it's an in-person training, and you're going to meet women from all across the nation, you know, from the West Coast, the East Coast, and everywhere in between. So that's really going to broaden your network. You're going to be able to hear about different communities, what they're doing in their community, what works. And this is like the nitty gritty of how to run for office. So you've decided, or maybe you haven't decided yet, still come learn about what running for office or running a campaign looks like and um, get comfortable with that so that you can start your own journey. Yeah. And here's more about the um, VRL HQ. So if you're interested in that opportunity, if you missed the code before, um, go ahead and get registered on there. Again, all these are free. We're not trying to sell you on anything. Um, but Run Lead is extremely generous and we make our resources very available. So VRL HQ is there. And ultimately here's one of our... Um, Actually, this was right when I was hired. This was our campaign leadership lab. Uh, women from across the country joining together to learn how to um, be campaign managers. I'd actually signed up to take this course and then ended up getting hired with the org. So it was really fun to get to go as an employee instead. And I still learned a lot. Um, so this was in Nashville, Tennessee. A lot of cool so opportunities. Yeah, we like to say that you're part of our family now. So welcome to the family. Uh, if my music was playing, you would hear, you know, we are family because, uh, you know, we truly believe that. Um, we want to be here for you. We want to be the the second person you tell that you're running for office, you know, or maybe the first even. We're open to that, too. Um and we're here for you throughout your campaign, throughout your journey. Maybe you're not running right now. Maybe it is five years from now, but we want to start having those conversations now because we want to be that special, you know, uh, piece in your toolkit that gets you over that finish line. Yeah. Any questions before we call it a night? Sounds like you're recommending a really personalized sort of approach, Kate and Beth. I don't know if you have any other thoughts on like, if someone is planning to run, maybe like they know they're going to run, what, what should they do exactly next? Sure. Like they should probably go through your list and do some of these things. 
because you gave us 90 days uh, of them, I right? Think, so the, you know, and then what? Well, and you know, what Kristen said was, you know, what is next? And I honestly think the process will start to guide you once you start doing those steps. So you'll have, if you in, are very intentional and do that, talk to have coffee with 15 community leaders or people who've run for office or people, you know, who are well plugged in or whoever you choose, you'll start to develop like, and you'll build those relationships. You'll get those insights. People will want to help you. They'll tell you, Hey, I'm going to this event. Come with me. Um, it'll start to become more clear as you do these steps. So there's a lot of it that will become apparent. Um, the other thing is, you know, ask the people who know, uh, ask your community there's so many elections going on right now Kristen where do you live sorry Kristen I'm picking on you specifically because you were the most curious open uh, yeah no I, I live up in Walker okay and okay. it's mine is the um a few years in the future maybe because yeah. I just moved here two years ago to Minnesota yeah. so yeah just kind of all the things on your list are the things I've been kind of trying to do to get acquainted with it so now yes. it's the okay well what am I gonna be doing next I, yeah. I like knowing the plan b plan c like, totally. the next like those part. concrete things I need a check box yeah 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 so a couple concrete things obviously the things that we talked about tonight but start building your team what is you know your kitchen cabinet look like those are the people who are going to be your closest advisors they may not actually be you know you'll want a campaign manager on there for sure but but they're the people who are advising you about your community. I'd also say start researching the elections in your community. What is that seat? You said it's a couple of years out that you're thinking about, but is there an election in a couple of years? When is that election? Which position is best for you? Maybe it's city council, maybe it's a county commission, maybe it's something else. You know, look into that and start exploring those so that when you get that kitchen cabinet together, they know what they're helping you achieve. Yeah. And even just civic, like in your community, see what different, um, uh, like I was on the Human Rights Commission for my city. I see, are there different, com like, like volunteer commissions you can serve on? Um, and again, that just really brings you closer to, I don't know, just gives you that experience, something that you can um, use that information to help you in the future. And again, and just, and frankly, like a lot of those things just really look good on a political resume. Um, you know, obviously that's not the only reason why you're doing it, but again, just those things will give you that additional credibility that helps establish you as a leader. So, um, yeah, see if there's different like subcommittees, people who advise the city council, um, things like that. I mean, yeah. Volunteer mm -hmm. work. It'll all start to take shape and then just really keeping in touch with people, the, the people who are running and the people who are helping them run your local, it all, it's just very much a, like a communal, you'll be surprised. People start tapping you on your shoulder. Hey, could, would you consider running? Um, because if you show up to places, people will take notice. Great advice. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions from anyone? Well, we're super glad that we were here tonight and um, thank you all for your questions. And, and you know, we will send the information out to Karen to get out to you, um, but we want to know you even better than we do now. So please do reach out and email us. I'll put our emails in the chat one more time. Um, and Kate, do you have any final words? No, just I'm really glad you came no. and keep us in mind too. If you have other people who are interested, you can say, oh, you should reach out to Vote Run Lead. They'll help you out. So um, we just really love being a resource for people. We never want anybody to feel alone or um, ill-equipped to move forward with something that they need to do. So we're here, we're here, we're here. Thank you for love being it. here. Nice to see all, all of you.
really great. Kate and Beth, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thanks for sharing these great resources and kind of very logical, like here's the things to do. I know for myself, I've taken some time and looked a little bit at your resources, but every time I look, there's more and more things there. So I encourage folks to check out those resources and do stay in touch with these folks, but also let NASW know if you're planning to run. So if you decide you are going to run, please let us know. Let us know how we can be helpful to you. We also want to know for our PACE committee, as I said, for our PAC, so that group that does our endorsements at the chapter, we absolutely want to know when social workers are running for office and know, you know, if you were to get endorsed by us, how we can help your campaign along the way also. So happy to help as things move along. With that, I just want to thank you all for joining us on this lovely fall evening, and I will see you again soon. Follow us in our upcoming um, legislative session. There's so much happening, so keep um, keep abreast of what's going on for our field, but also um, just politically across Minnesota. I mean, you can't stay away from it right now, folks, right? So I'm glad you're all interested in thinking about being a part of this um, political world, maybe a little bit more for yourself, maybe to help someone else or, or yourself run. Um, please run. There's your last invite for tonight. Please run, folks. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Take really good care.